I did make every effort to include the latest scientific studies. Please note, though, that research is constantly changing, and one clinical trial cannot always cover diverse bodies and communities. Everybody has their own individual genome and physiology. Although I'm not a medical doctor, my references are credible. Some of my favorite reliable sources of information include the U.S. National Library of Medicine, Cochrane Library, European Journal of Clinical Nutrition, International Journal of Plant Sciences and Phytomedicine, and Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology. If you wish to deep dive into the topic, you can check out my sources and references posted in the description box below. Not all of the fruits in this presentation may be suitable for everyone. If you have any medical conditions or allergies, please consult with your healthcare provider before adding any new fruits to your diet. First off, grapefruit. In a systematic review published in 2017, researchers evaluated the evidence for the effectiveness of grapefruits on body weight, blood pressure, and lipid profile. Three randomized controlled trials with a total of 250 participants were included, and the analysis revealed a significant decrease in systolic blood pressure, but no significant difference in body weight. The study concluded that further clinical trials evaluating the effects of grapefruit are needed due to the small number of randomized controlled trials and short durations of interventions. While grapefruit has its share of health benefits, it's essential to consider the risks associated with consuming it. The fruit's ability to trigger drug interactions, high levels of potassium and acidity should be taken into account before incorporating it into your diet. Second on the list is hawthorn berry. You can find hawthorn berries all over Europe, North America, and Asia. These nutrient-rich berries are small fruits that grow on trees and shrubs. They have a tart and tangy flavor with just a hint of sweetness. Plus, they come in a variety of colors ranging from bright yellow to deep red. A pilot study published in the U.S. National Library of Medicine in 2002 investigated the potential of hawthorn extract and magnesium dietary supplements, both alone and in combination, to reduce blood pressure in mildly hypertensive subjects. 36 volunteers were randomly assigned to daily supplements of magnesium, hawthorn extract, a combination of both, or a placebo for 10 weeks. While all groups experienced a decline in blood pressure, a promising reduction in resting diastolic blood pressure and anxiety was observed in the group taking Hawthorne extract. One limitation of this study is its small sample size, with only 36 mildly hypertensive subjects participating. Further research with larger sample sizes and longer intervention periods is needed to confirm the potential hypotensive effects of Hawthorne extract. Another study published in 2006 investigated the effects of Hawthorne extract for hypertension in patients with type 2 diabetes who were already taking prescribed drugs. A total of 79 patients were randomly assigned to receive either 1,200 mg of Hawthorne extract or a placebo for 16 weeks. The results showed that the Hawthorne group had significantly greater reductions in diastolic blood pressure compared to the placebo group. However, there was no significant difference in systolic blood pressure reduction between the two groups. The study also found no herb-drug interaction and a reduction in minor health complaints in both groups. This randomized controlled trial is the first to demonstrate the hypotensive effects of Hawthorne in patients with diabetes who are already taking medication. Next is pomegranate. A 2011 study titled, The Effects of Pomegranate Juice Consumption on Blood Pressure and Cardiovascular Health, found that pomegranate juice consumption may reduce systolic blood pressure and inhibit serum ACE activity, making it a heart-healthy fruit. ACE is an enzyme that can increase blood pressure by constricting blood vessels. The review included five articles meeting inclusion criteria and suggested that pomegranate juice has anti-atherosclerotic, anti-hypertensive, antioxidant, and anti-inflammatory effects. More clinical research is needed, but the data reviewed suggests that pomegranate juice supplementation may be a positive addition to managing hypertension and cardiovascular health. By the way, before I continue, if you're new here, I'm Jara from the Philippines. Welcome to my channel where I share my knowledge and discoveries about everything related to anti-aging, natural health remedies, dogs and cats, and personal development gained from reading research articles and scientific journals. If you also have a gluttonous appetite for new knowledge, please consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell so that you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video. Also, you might want to check out my mini ebook 
40 wrinkle fighters other than retinol backed by scientific studies. Just click the link in the description box below or go directly to my Payhip store at payhip.com forward slash Jara Soriano. Moving on, the fourth fruit on the list is blueberry. In an eight-week, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trial in 48 postmenopausal women with pre- and stage 1 hypertension published in 2015, it showed that blueberry powder significantly decreased systolic and diastolic blood pressures and arterial stiffness. The study suggests that daily blueberry consumption may reduce blood pressure and arterial stiffness by increasing nitric oxide production. There are a few potential limitations of this study, such as the relatively small sample size and the fact that all participants were postmenopausal women with pre- and stage 1 hypertension from a specific geographic area. These factors could limit the ability to generalize the findings to other populations. Next is kiwi fruit. A 2015 randomized controlled study examined the effects of adding kiwi fruit to the usual diet on 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure, office blood pressure, and endothelial function. 118 participants with stage 1 hypertension were randomly assigned to eat either three kiwi fruits or one apple a day for eight weeks. The study revealed that among men and women with moderately elevated blood pressure, intake of three kiwi fruits was associated with lower systolic and diastolic 24 hour blood pressure compared with one apple a day. Next is lemon. A 2014 study examined the effects of daily lemon intake and walking on blood pressure and related parameters in 101 middle-aged and older women in an island area in Hiroshima, Japan. The participants recorded their daily lemon intake and number of steps walked for five months, and their physical measurements, blood tests, blood pressure, and pulse wave were analyzed. The study found that daily lemon intake and walking were effective for high blood pressure and showed significant negative correlation with systolic blood pressure change. Multiple linear regression analysis suggested that lemon ingestion is involved more greatly with blood citric acid concentration change and the number of steps with blood pressure change, and that the two are related to blood pressure improvement by different action mechanisms. However, the lemon intake was self-reported by the participants which may lead to inaccuracies or biases in the data. Also, the study did not control for other potential confounding factors that could affect blood pressure and related parameters, such as diet and other lifestyle factors. Seventh on the list is watermelon. A randomized controlled trial published in 2011 investigated the effects of watermelon supplementation on aortic blood pressure and arterial function in individuals with prehypertension. The study found that watermelon supplementation led to a significant decrease in brachial pulse pressure, aortic systolic blood pressure, aortic pulse pressure, and augmentation index, which measures arterial stiffness. However, there was no significant effect on other factors such as heart rate, brachial diastolic blood pressure, and carotid femoral pulse wave velocity. This pilot study suggests that watermelon supplementation may improve aortic hemodynamics in individuals with prehypertension. It means that the study provides some preliminary evidence that consuming watermelon, which contains the amino acid L-citrulline, may have a beneficial effect on the functioning of the aorta, the main artery of the body, in individuals who have prehypertension, elevated blood pressure that is not yet in the hypertensive range. The study is only a pilot study though, which means that it is a small-scale exploratory study that is not conclusive enough to make firm recommendations about watermelon supplementation as a treatment for prehypertension. Further research, such as larger randomized controlled trials, would be needed to confirm these findings and to investigate the potential benefits and risks of watermelon supplementation for prehypertension and other cardiovascular conditions. Next is mango. A 2018 study conducted at the University of California, Davis, found that postmenopausal women who consumed two cups of mango per day for 14 days showed a reduction in systolic blood pressure within two hours after consumption. The study also found that some participants showed favorable changes in the production of breath methane, an indication of the potential influence on gut fermentation. Mangoes contain a mix of polyphenols, which have been linked to potential health-protecting properties. The researchers conclude that mangoes may be a heart-healthy fruit that may help reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, but longer-term studies involving other population groups are needed. Next is Concord Grape. Concord Grape is a cultivar of grapes that is native to North America. It was first developed in Concord, Massachusetts in the mid-19th century by Ephraim Wales Bull, 
who crossbred wild grapevines to create a grape that was both hearty and flavorful. Concord grapes are usually dark purple in color and have a thick, tough skin that can be easily peeled away to reveal a juicy, sweet flesh. They are widely used for making grape juice, jelly, and other grape-based products and are also used to make wine. A clinical trial published in the U.S. National Library of Medicine in 2004 investigated the effect of consuming Concord grape juice on blood pressure in hypertensive patients. The study involved 40 participants who were given either Concord grape juice or a placebo drink for eight weeks. Blood pressure was measured at the beginning and end of the study. Results showed that the group consuming Concord grape juice had a significant reduction in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure compared to the placebo group. The study suggests that consuming Concord grape juice, which is high in polyphenolic compounds, may have a beneficial effect on blood pressure in hypertensive individuals. The study did not monitor dietary intake though, which could potentially influence the results. By monitoring the participants' diets, researchers could control for the potential confounding effects of other dietary factors. Tenth on the list is Montmorency Tart Cherry. Montmorency Tart Cherry is a type of cherry that is commonly used for culinary purposes and also has potential health benefits. It is a sour cherry variety that is grown mainly in the United States, Canada, and Europe. A study published in 2016 examined the acute effects of Montmorency tart cherry juice on vascular function in men with early hypertension. A randomized, placebo-controlled, blinded crossover design was used, with 15 participants receiving either a 60 milliliters dose of Montmorency tart cherry concentrate or placebo. Results showed that Montmorency tart cherry consumption significantly lowered systolic blood pressure over a period of three hours with peak reductions of seven millimeters of mercury two hours after consumption relative to the placebo. Improvements in cardiovascular disease risk factors were closely linked to increases in circulating protocatechoic and vanillic acid at one to two hours post-consumption. The study suggests that Montmorency tart cherry intake acutely reduces systolic blood pressure in men with early hypertension, potentially through the actions of circulating phenolic acids. The study only included men with early hypertension, which limits the generalizability of the results. Including women and a more diverse population would help to determine if the results can be extrapolated to the broader population. And lastly, Haas Avocado. Haas Avocado is a type of avocado named after a man named Rudolf Haas, who first grew the avocado variety in California in the 1920s. Commonly found in supermarkets and grocery stores, Haas avocados are often used in guacamole or sliced up and added to sandwiches, salads, or burgers. A randomized, controlled trial published in 2013 looked at how adding Haas avocado to a hamburger affects our body after we eat it. Researchers found that when we eat a hamburger, it can make our blood vessels tighten up, which is not good for our heart health. But when we eat a hamburger with Haas avocado, it doesn't do that as much. The avocado also helps to reduce inflammation in our body, which is good for our health. However, the study was conducted on a small group of 11 healthy subjects. Increasing the number of participants can provide more reliable and statistically significant results. If you've learned something you didn't know before watching this presentation and you appreciate the time I invested in researching, writing, and creating this presentation, please give this video a like. If you're interested in looking and feeling your best and exploring natural solutions, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching!